Hello and welcome to my channel. This channel is all about reading audiobooks from Erin Hunter, or similar books. The book I'll be reading today is called Hawkwing's Journey and it is a super edition within the series Warriors written by Erin Hunter. The chapter I'll be reading is chapter 5, but I just wanted to make a quick note that I have recently become sick. Now, this won't terribly impact on my recording, um, but there will be maybe some coughing parts or weird um, sounds within the recording that I may not be able to edit out, so I do apologise beforehand. Thank you. Hawking padded over to the foot of the rock pod to join Billy Storm, Wolf's Whisker and Pebblepaw. Several days had passed since he discovered Darktown near the side of the fire, and from the information he'd given to Leaf Star and Echo Song, it seemed as if the other clans might be only a journey of two or three sunrises away. The whole clan had been delighted by that news, and Leaf Star decided to send a patrol at once. Hawking still couldn't believe that he had been chosen. It was his first quest away from camp, and it might have been the most important quest any Skyguard cat had ever undertaken. He felt a tingling shiver of excitement slip down his spine to think that they might be only a few sunrises from meeting the other clans and fulfilling Starclan's prophecy. Hawkwing, Billy Storm meowed as Hawkwing joined the group. It's good to have you along. We're only waiting for Blossomheart now. Hawkwing felt his pelt prickle with hostility as he glanced at Billy Storm's apprentice, Pebblepaw standing beside her mentor. He felt resentful from ears to tail tip that she was coming with them, and that Billy Storm had specifically asked Leafstar to add her to the patrol. Seeing how Pebblepaw was completely recovered now just made him remember that Duskpaw wasn't. He couldn't imagine how he would stand being so close to her for days on end. She's only an apprentice, he grumbled to himself. She probably won't be any use at all. Blossomheart bounded up to join the patrol just as Leafstar and Sharpclaw padded up to say goodbye, followed by Cherrytail, Echo Song, Parsley Paw, and a few more Skyclan cats. Darktail was with them. He had begged Leafstar to be allowed to join the patrol, but Echo Song had pointed out he still wasn't fit to travel any distance. I wish I was coming with you, he meowed. Billy Storm, you remember the directions I gave you? I do, Billy Storm replied, and hope by the time we get back, you'll be well again. Thanks. Darktail ducked his head. I'm so grateful you've accepted me into your camp. He deserves it, Hawkwing thought, pride warming his pelt. He's told us so much that we really need to know. We're so lucky I found him. It's time we were going, Billy Storm gestured with his tail for the patrol to gather together. Is every cat ready? Hawkwing touched noses with his mother to say goodbye. Be careful, Cherry Tail warned him, and hurry back. I can't wait to hear what you find out about the other clans. Especially Thunderclan, Sharpclaw added, looking down at his son with a gleam of approval in his green eyes. I find it hard to believe that Firestar is dead. We'll find out for you, Blossomheart assured him. Then farewell, leave Stummy out, and may Starclan light your path. Billy Storm led the way up the trail to the top of the gorge and through the undergrowth to the stretch of scrubby open ground that separated Skyclan territory from the two lake place. The sun shone and the air was still. The only sound was the gentle humming of bees and the swish of grasses as the cats brushed their way through. Dark Dust says we have to go straight to the two lake place and through it, Billy Storm meowed. We... I don't like the idea of travelling through the two lake place. Blossom Heart sounded as if she was trying hard not to show nervousness. Two lakes are bad news. Billy Storm flicked her gently over one ear with the tip of his tail. Some of them are okay and most of them won't bother us. I can spot a bad two lake right away. Plus, he added... I still know my way through the two leg place. So where do we go after that? Hawkwing asked eagerly. We cross the thunder path, then look for a tree that splits into three, Billy Storm went on. From there, we turn and head toward the setting sun. We'll know we're going the right way when we come to a clearing ringed with trees, with a small stream running through it. According to Darktail, there's an abandoned badger stand there, with clan cats for a two days journey beyond that. That sounds straightforward enough, was Whisker commented and twitched his whiskers. I can't wait to get there. How excited to meet the other clans, after all these seasons apart. Yeah, we might get to meet Firestar, Pebble Paul mewed hopefully. He's dead, mouse brain, Hawkwing thought, but said nothing aloud. He didn't even want to speak to Pebble Paul. Yes, we don't know for sure he's dead, Billy Storm responded. 
and his kin must still be alive in Thunderclan. And Sandstorm, Wasp was guarded. The she-cat who came to Skyclan along with Firestar, she was brave too. Blossom Heart gave a little bounce. This is so exciting. Leafster told me stuff about the clans that Firestar told her, Billy Storm went on. He said all the other clans think that Thunderclan is bossy and its cats always believe they're right. If Firestar was their leader, they probably are always right, Pebblepoor observed. Firestar was such a hero. I heard some of those stories too, whilst Whisker mewed. Wing Clan cats are fast runners, River Clan cats swim like fishes, and... And you can't trash Shadow Clan cats as far as you could throw them, Billy Storm finished. I wonder if that's true. Pebblepoor was silent for a moment, patting alongside her mentor, the meowed. Do you think it'll be a good thing, being around a bunch of other cats who tell us what to do? Skyclan's used to going its own way. That's mouse-brained, Hawkwing responded curtly, unable to resist the chance to contradict Pebblepaw. We'll be stronger for all together. Pebblepaw flopped off her neck purr and opened her jaws for a retort, but she was interrupted by Blossom Heart. Ooh, look! The ginger and white she-cat exclaimed. They cloud up there. It looks just like a cat with a long curly tail. Great Starkland. Are they all mouse-brained? Hawkwing thought irritably. I don't see why you're in such high spirits, he snapped at his sister. Not after everything that's happened. Blossom Heart flinched away from him, her gaze clouding. Hawkwing was immediately sorry that he had hurt her feelings. He knew very well she was still grieving for Duskpaw. I didn't mean, he began. He broke off as Pebblepaw thrust himself between him and Blossom Heart, with a savage glance at Hawkwing. I think it's a perfectly beautiful cloud, she mewed, and it looks just like a cat. The two she-cats padded on side by side, behind the older warriors, and Hawkwing brought up the rear, slightly seething. It's all Pebblepaw's fault. With her around, I can't think straight. Before they reached the true lake place, Billy Storm halted beside a small copse of beech trees, not far from the first of the two lake dens. We might as well hunt here, he meowed, before we head into the two lake place. There will be slim pickings there. Hawkwing's jaws watered at the thought of prey. He'd eaten a sparrow at dawn, and Echo Song had given travelling herbs to all the questing cats, but he knew better than to turn down a chance to eat. Who knew how much prey they'd find when they left their territory? He padded close, cautiously into the copse, his jaws parted to taste the air. He dropped into the hunter's crouch as he picked up the scent of a mouse and spotted it nibbling something at the foot of a nearby tree. He began to creep up on it, remembering to set his paws down as light as falling leaves. But as he tensed, ready to pounce, he felt the brush of fur against his pelt and spotted Pebblepaw heading past him toward the same tree. She's so young and stupid she didn't even scent it, Hawkwing thought as his mouse scuttled off and disappeared among the roots. It would have to be her ruining my hunt. By the same hour the mouse vanished, Hawkwing heard paw steps scampering through the grass and spotted a squirrel with blossom heart in hot pursuit. The squirrel started to swarm up the tree trunk, but Pebblepaw was in the right place. She leaped after it, dug her claws into its back and brought it down, where she killed it with a swift bite to its throat. Thank you, Starkland, for this prey, she meowed, her eyes shining with triumph. Blossom Heart ran up to her. Great catch. That was a brilliant plan, Pebblepaw. We make a good team, Pebblepaw purred. Despite herself, Orkwing was impressed by Pebblepaw's hunting skills, but he wasn't going to tell her that, especially when she made me lose my prey. Billy Storm and Wasp Whisker came paddling through the trees, Wasp Whisker carrying a blackbird. Wow, Billy Storm exclaimed when he saw the squirrel. Whose was that? Pebblepaws, Blossom Heart responded. We both caught it, Pebblepaw added immediately. Billy Storm gave his apprentice a nod of approval. Good job, let's eat. With a whisk of her tail, Pebblepaw invited Hawkwing to share her squirrel. Though he crouched down with the others without a word, every mouthful tasted like crow food. She did well, he admitted to himself grudgingly, but I wish I caught my own prey instead of having to feel grateful to her. When the squirrel had been picked to the bones, the patrol set off again. Billy Storm took the lead as they headed into the two lake place. Hawkeye felt every hair on his pelt rise with apprehension as he padded into the shadows of the tall stone dens. The air grew stale, full of the scents of monsters and unfamiliar food. Duskpool would have loved this, Wasp Whisker mewed, dropping back to walk alongside Hawkwing. He couldn't get enough of two-leg food. He was always trying to get around the rules and sneak off. Hawkwing remembered how irritating he had found it when his brother did that. Now all he could think about was how much fun his brother had been. 
He would have given anything to have Dusk pull back, even if he'd never seemed to take his apprentice training seriously. The memories choked him so that he couldn't reply to Wasp Whisker. I had to scold him and punish him sometimes, the grey and white Tom went on. That was my job as his mentor, but otherwise he would never learn. He must have shifted more ticks from the elder's fur than any other apprentice in the clan. But he was never resentful. He would always make a joke, so it was hard to be angry with him. I know. Hawking managed to speak at last. When we were kids, he thought up the best games. And he was really good at sneaking off so we could play. Amusement glimmered in Wasp Whisker's eyes. I remember Cherry Tail saying her paws would fall off. She spent so much time chasing him back into the nursery. Gradually, listening to the older warrior, Hawking began to feel comforted. This was the first time any cat had spoken to him so openly about Duskpaw. I guess they thought it would hurt me too much, but it's good to hear Wasp Whisker's memories. It makes Duskpaw seem closer, somehow. I'll never stop missing him, Hawking managed to mew softly. Wasp Whisker nodded understandingly. He had so much spirit. You know, I blame myself, he added. Hawking gazed at him, startled, but it was my fault. Maybe if I'd been stern with Duskpaw about leaving the territory without a warrior, he wouldn't have sneaked off that day to get the two-leg food, and then he'd still be alive. You can't know that, Hawkwing responded, feeling how strange it was to reassure a more experienced warrior. No cat ever stopped Duskpaw from doing what he wanted. Wasp Whisker lit out a little half of amusement. No. You couldn't be responsible, because I'm responsible, Hawkwing continued. I could have saved him. Wasp Whisker touched Hawkwing's shoulder with the tip of his tail. Maybe when some cat dies, part of our grief is feeling guilty and wishing we'd done things differently, even though there's nothing we could have done. He let out a deep sigh. You know, I don't think Duskpool will want either of us to feel guilty. He always wanted every cat to be happy. That's true, Hawkwing murmured. One time, when Emily Claw was teaching me to hunt, I was upset because I missed a really easy catch. Duskpaw brought his mouse to share with me and told me a funny story about how he tripped over his own paws trying to stalk a rabbit. We'll grieve for him and miss him, Wasp Whisker went on, but we should remember that it is his happiness he would want us to carry in our hearts when we think of him. Hawkwing's chest swelled as the older warrior's wisdom, but a harpy later the sound of high-pitched two-leg yelling struck his ears and his heart started to pound with shock. Get down, Billy Storm ordered. Deep in conversation with Wasp Whisker, Hawking had hardly noticed his surroundings as they followed Billy Storm through the two-leg place. Now he realised they'd left the last of the dens behind them and begun to cross a stretch of grass with the thunderpath beyond. Crouching close together with the rest of the patrol, he spotted several two-leg kits ahead of him, running up and down and waving their forepaws round, as if they're having some kind of battle. Listen to me, Billy Storm hissed. This could be dangerous. Some two legs can be violent and unpredictable, and their kits are even worse. It's usually best to hide and wait for them to go away, but this grass won't give us cover for long. They're bound to spot us soon. So what do we do? Pebblepaw asked. We'll have to make a run for it, Billy Storm replied. Once we get across the Thunderpuff, we should be safe. In my experience, two leg kits won't cross in until unless they have bigger two legs with them. So when I say run, run, and for Starkland's sake, watch out for monsters. Hawkwing peered out through the stems of grass, his heart thumping harder than ever. The thunderpath was many fox lengths ahead of them, directly on the other side of the group of battling two-leg kits. As Hawkwing stared at them, one of the two-leg kits let out a louder screech and started to run toward the cats, pointing with one forepaw. Go! Billy Storm meowed. Hawkwing sprang forward, wind streaming through his fur as he raced for the thunderpath. Pearlpaw and Blossomheart held along just ahead of him while Wasp Whisker kept pace alongside him and Billy Storm brought up the rear. More two-leg kits were chasing them now, the air filled with a horrible caterwauling. The Thunderpuff drew closer and closer. We're gonna make it, Hawkwing thought. Then one of Hawkwing's forepaws slid down into a concealed dip in the ground. He lost his balance and rolled over and over, ending up on his side, all the breath driven out of him. Hawkwing looked up, gasping for air, to see all his clanmates far ahead of him. Blossomheart and Pebblepaw had already crossed the Thunderpuff. Wasp Whisker was waiting on the near side while a gleaming blue monster roared past. Only Billy Storm skidded to a halt in front of Hawkwing and looked back. Go on, Hawkwing yelled. I'm okay. I'll catch up. As Billy Storm raced on, Hawkwing felt a shadow fall over him. 
He turned his head to see two legged kids stooping over him, one huge forepaw reaching out to grab him. Another, something strange glittered in his other forepaw, and his mouth gaped, letting out a triumphant screech. Hawking sprang up and dodged away, barely avoiding the outstretched paw. But as he streaked away across the glass, a blow struck him on his back. He could feel something trickling through his fur. Oh, Starkland, help me. It must be blood. Hawking wondered if he was somehow so badly injured he couldn't even feel the pain. But strangely, the wound didn't stop him from running. Reaching the edge of the thunderpuff, he hurled himself across it without even looking up. The air was split with a screeching so loud it drowned out the sounds of the two leg kits, and Hawking felt wind buffeting his tail and his hindquarters as a massive monster grabbed past. As soon as his paws touched the grass on the far side of the thunderpuff, Hawking collapsed, panting. His clanmates gathered around and stared down at him, concerns looked on their faces. They got me, Hawking gasped. The two leg kits got me. I'm bleeding. Even as he spoke, he felt that something wasn't right. Blood was supposed to be warm, but he realised for the first time the stuff dripping down his back was cold. Billy stood bent closer and gave him a long sniff. That's not blood, he mewed. His eyes were sparkling with amusement, though he was clearly trying to keep it out of his voice. It's water. What? Hawking twisted around, trying to crane his neck so that he could see. Water, Billy Storm repeated. The two light kits were shooting it out of weird shiny things that held in their paws. Relief flooding through him, Hawking staggered to his paws. He could see that every cat, like Billy Storm, was struggling to keep a serious expression, as if they were all trying to hide how funny they found his misadventure. I suppose it is pretty funny, he thought. Dustpool would be rolling on the ground with laughter if he hear it now. But then Hawkwing noticed the pebble paw turned away to hide her face, and in spite of her efforts, her tail was curling up with amusement. Anger spurted up inside him, stifling his relief. Dustpool isn't here to laugh because of her. How dare she laugh at me? It's not funny, he yelled at pebble paw. I could have been killed. Pebble paw spun around to face him again. With water? Well, I could have drowned. Blossom Heart let out a snort of laughter, and Hawkwing spun around to glare at her. Honestly? Pebblepool rolled her eyes. Are you a mouse? Even a mouse couldn't have drowned in that much water. Hawking slid out his claws, a breath away from leaping on Pebblepool and scratching her ears. Well, I know you don't take death very seriously, he snarled. His gaze met Pebblepool's, and for a few heartbeats she stared back at him. Hawking could see that she understood she was he was referring to Hawk Duskpool's death. And I can see that I've hurt her. Well, she deserves it. Billy Storm's eyes narrowed. He looked ready to step in, then clearly decided to let his apprentice fight his own battles. That's totally unfair, Pebblepool protested to Hawkwing with a lash of her tail. We were only having a bit of fun. I do take death seriously, she added, clearly trying to calm down. Never mind, I can see there's no point trying to make you understand. He shrugged, turning away. Hawkwing didn't want to listen anymore. With a furious hiss, he whirled around and stalked off away from the thunderpuff not waiting to see if any of his clanmates followed. The other soon caught up to him. Take it easy, Billy stormed me out. Blaming another cat won't lessen our grief. We still have a long way to go before we stop for the night, and we'll only make it more difficult if we start quarrelling among ourselves. Hawking simply grunted an acknowledgement of the senior warrior's words. He felt as if no cat would ever understand what he was going through. Heading forward, ignoring the rest of his clanmates, Hawkwing decided the only way to survive this quest was to keep to himself and not talk to any cat. I don't even know if I'm being fair anymore, and I don't care. All he could feel was the pain of missing Duskpool. He was glad when the sun went down and they could start looking for a place to make camp.